It's that time again. Ashley! What? I thought you understood that this is the universal part of the uniform. These, they're supposed to just kind of be a me thing. And do you understand that CD noir detectives with $3 in their bank account do not hold the monopoly on dark shades? Besides, this is a spy movie. Spies wear glasses. That's actually a pretty fair point. Okay, I'll allow it this time. Wow, that's so gracious of you. The Swan Princess 7. Yes, it does exist. So does an eighth one. And there just so happens to be a ninth one on the horizon as well. According to franchise director Richard Rich, these movies have consistently sold well on DVD for many years, which is why Sony asked Ness to produce more. So these later sequels are a direct product of grandmothers checking the bargain bin for animated movies. Fun fact, the VHS tape in our Swan Princess 2 review was actually purchased by my own grandmother. I did watch it multiple times as a kid, so it's not exactly like I can get upset with her about it. I mean, she is my grandmother. As for the current wave of Swan Princess fanaticism, that can be blamed on today's clueless grandparents, nostalgic millennials, and most heartbreaking of all, us. Yes, we tear these movies apart for the sake of entertainment. You're welcome. But a purchase for the sake of review is still a purchase, which means we're ironically feeding the machine of our suffering. The day may come when we break this cycle of abuse, but it is not this day. Today, we're taking a look at the spy-themed sequel. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is Swan Princess Royally Undercover. We open on a guy with a fake hand sabotaging a dam. Derek and Odette travel to the town of Trumbeau, where the dam is, to sign a trade agreement. Before we sign this historic agreement, allow me a fond reflection. Ah, uh, here we go. Hey look Ashley, you're in the movie. Also, their chef Ferdinand gets some focused screen time for a bit. Um, yay? Because it's Epelina. Spice of spices. I'm afraid Count Antonio here has already spoken for this law. Not at all. It's yours, I insist. <gasps> Sold to Count Antonio! Was buying all of it really necessary? Well, they did say Epilania is a spice, and in Star Wars, spice means drugs. You know this isn't Star Wars. I'm aware of that, Ashley. If it were, I'd be enjoying myself. Derek discovers the broken dam because the villagers who live there don't have time for basic observational skills. We gotta make Derek look good. <laughs> Um, pardon me if this is too plain an expression, uh, but what? Antonio was right in front of Derek as the water was coming up. Whatever secret ninja trick he pulled, there's no realistic way for Derek not to have seen it. The two parties agree that they will raise funds to rebuild the destroyed town. We'll raise money to rebuild the dam. It sure won't be easy. Or cheap. And yet it falls to us. Antonio is even amicable to a furious Ferdinand. My Epilenia! All the Epilenia that could be saved belongs to you, young chef. They're really making him out to be just 
such a good person. Which leads me to immediately suspect that he's being telegraphed as the villain. This charitable venture leads into the first song. Do what you can and just be. isn't bad, a clear message of goodwill, and pleasant enough to listen to. The sequence isn't bad either. Aside from lack of traffic control as these carriages are merging onto the trail. But look at this shot. For this series, it's impressive to see a shot with such a widespread view, giving us a real sense of scale. A shot that's actually aesthetically- Hey Ashley, I don't think those carriages are moving. A still painting. Of course it's a still painting! Why did I expect anything better? Next, we see Lucas, the island dweller from the last movie, farming tulips with his parents. Stop by the castle to give these to Princess Elise. Again? We'll never stop thanking her for bringing you home to us. It's not that. It's... she always invites me in. So? So? I'm not a prince or anything. Oh, Lucas, we'll be part of the royal family soon enough. Despite him and Elise developing a friendship in the last movie, Lucas feels the need to make it weird. Uh. <laughs> well, where are you going? I hoped he would stay and play. Though not anywhere near as weird as Rogers just made it by saying that. Bird are old and stagnant by this point. He has to live vicariously by building a new ship. And then the king said, or rather, he saved my life. <laughs> he looks so nice. Oh, come on. He has an unfair advantage. He's not animated like you. After a brief reminder that Ruberta is still technically afloat. I shall name it after my heart's true love. You better. Rogers and Lucas share an exchange in Alpernian code. It's Lucas. <gasps> it's me, Lord Rogers! The rules of which appear to be flash the lantern in rhythm with your speech. <sighs> Hello? Hello? I just don't get it. I thought Lucas and I would be best friends. I mean, we nearly got killed together. That's like a blood oath or something, isn't it? Count Antonio arrives at the castle and... <gasps> No! No, 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 no. This ship has already set sail. There is no going back to harbor now. Derek didn't tell me that you could pass for his sister. <laughs> Seriously? I'm just saying, you've got a tower of gray hair. Let's keep it real. I don't know where the movie is going, but I do know that a senior citizen's jealousy triangle is the last thing that it needs. Unfortunately, it's already in motion, and it gets even worse. Derek tells me you lost your dear wife. It is true. Years ago. I'm so delighted. Oh, oh I, I mean excited. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm sad. Oh, I'm very, very sad. Yes, it is true that Uberta's current behavior is clawing at my nerves. But far more noteworthy is that Antonio is ignoring the fact that she's completely tactless. Since I arrived here, for some reason I no longer wish to be alone. If he is the villain, he's probably manipulating her, so it makes perfect sense for him to tolerate this. All of this, donated by your people. Okay, correction. He's definitely the villain, or the story is going really far to try and make us think that he is. And Rogers seems to agree. Count Antonio? Is the devil. The devil does use a pitchfork, does he not? Well, what about his hat? He never removes it. What could he be hiding? Horns, maybe? We've seen him without his hat. You've seen him without his hat. He's come to hurt us. <laughs> to take away what, what we love. To take away you better. Oh, your wife? Oh, oh, oh Antonio, I... I, I Oh, who am I kidding? Yes, a big fat yes! 
Rogers and Uberta have grown close over the course of four movies together. To develop a relationship that far, only to suddenly draw Uberta's eyes elsewhere, that's both bad dating and an insult to your characters. Even more so when Elise discovers it's a sham. She can't possibly think I would marry her. You know me, I'm a flirt. <gasps> I knew Antonio was a rapscallion, didn't I say it? Ah! We must figure out what he's doing before he breaks her precious heart. Keep an eye on him around the clock. You mean we'll be like spies? Not like spies. Spies. I feel like that probably could have been phrased better. Ooh. <clears throat> Not like, my dear. We will be spies. Eh? Um, it was better than the movies. That's not really a compliment, but I will take it nonetheless. Every hour of your day is planned out. Same thing, day after simple, safe day. <sighs> you want to be a spy? Yes. Can we borrow Lucas for a few days? Uh, yes. For life if you wish, princess. Puffin, we all understand that you're retired. I'm all in. And that your spying days are over. Read my niece. He's in. Oh, well, usually when you go to the retired guy, he's reluctant. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a pretty popular cliche. I want 20% of the take. There's no take. In that case, I want 50%. We're doing this for queen and country, that's it. Okay, I'll take the country and you can have the queen. And that was a decent satire on negotiation. He can't even keep up in slow motion. <laughs> um, audience? A well-executed, legitimately amusing sequence in a Spawn Princess movie. Cherish it. They are few and far between. Rogers unveils his secret spy lair, showing his Da Vinci tendencies in the New Age sequels go much further than we ever thought they would. This may look like a bow tie, but this little feature makes it a blow tie. What? <laughs> that name sounds like an insult. Oh, I, I see what they did there. I'll give it a pass. The <coughs> master plan is to send Lucas and Elise on a charity run with Antonio's chauffeur, Bruno, but divert him to Antonio's kingdom of Borromeo so they can investigate his true intentions. Wouldn't that defeat our purpose? To deliver these toys quickly? We can get even more toys. And more toys means have your kids, right? Whoa, whoa. You make a good point. But we already have so many, and too many toys will only spoil the children, no? Decent attempts at diversion, repelled by sound logic. You know, maybe this is why adults are written to be dumb in kids' movies. If you throw something logical into the mix, you actually have to think of a clever way to get out of it. Meanwhile, Rogers and Jean-Bob spy on Uberta and Antonio. I look suspicious. A frog by the pond is not suspicious. It's expected. Yeah, decent logic, except when it's a frog she knows personally. <laughs> Did she not recognize him? The kids resort to plan B. Run off and leave Bruno a note. There's something we must do. Why don't you take the toys on to Trimbo and don't be scared for us, Princess Elise. Ah, those dumb kids. Find them, but don't hurt them. I think Bruno might be the most level-headed adult in this series since original trilogy Rogers. I'll never again be a sunrise for me because she was my life. Okay, first two movies, Rogers. Back at the castle, vomit is happening. My favorite. In this kingdom, the king always carries the keys. So you mean Rogers, then? I can't imagine what would be in there. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Wedding decorations. Oh, dear, is there something you'd like to ask me? Um... Bruno calls Antonio away. Antonio! And his true nature is revealed. Ah, 
Now those little brats will nose around and figure out everything. Everything was going perfectly. The flood, the rescue, the flirting. The only thing left was hijacking Uberta's ship at sea. I knew this movie wasn't clever enough to pull a fast one on us, but at least they didn't drag out the reveal of his villainy for the audience. Puffin, scouting in Borromeo, finds an unlikely ally. A character we never expected to see again until viewing this movie's trailer. Number nine from Swan Prince's Christmas. You almost destroyed our kingdom. I'm taking you back to Stam Tribe. Whatever you're here for, whatever you're here for, I can help you. But not just yet. Antonio deceives Derek and Odette. I have fallen in love with your mother. Do you despise me for it? No, not at all. I'm actually impressed. She's been a widow my entire life. I figured that was for a reason. This causes Rogers to start taking drastic and very creepy measures. Well, we can make this. What a lovely... Ah. Back in Borromeo, the kids learn that Antonio has yet to send ships to Trumbeau for the charity effort. I mean, your kingdom's ships also haven't left, but you know, whatever. They use what might be the most technologically impossible tie in their arsenal to disguise Lucas as a prince. Wow, you look great. Princess Elise. And I'm sort of Prince Lucas. But alas, even the best technology can't disguise stupidity. But it's their concern about Antonio that gets them in to see the king. Because honesty is the best espionage? May I ask why you have traveled so far to have this question answered? It looks like my grandmom is falling in love with him. Here's your answer. There isn't a man more honest and true than Count Antonio. How can we repay your kindness? If you could find my darn cat, that would be wonderful. He's gonna help us gather intel. No, Puffin. Antonio is a good guy. I can tell you where to get answers, but I cannot go with you. Number nine's tip does yield valuable information. How do you steal all this from some tiny island? Cause he's the slyest thief alive. Just imagine what he's gonna get from that queen you beckon, huh? <laughs> yeah, he'll be coming back with all her gold any day. But things still go badly for the kids. Poor children. They stuck their noses in where they should not have. You're one of them? The trailer asked, can they be trusted? So far, we're two for three on no. You've got my grandfather's sword. Do I? Does that really matter right now? Puffin and number nine return the kids' gadgets, allowing them to subdue the guards. <laughs> Let's go. Wait. First, take us to the castle. Huh? I'm not leaving without my grandpa's sword. I second Ashley on that one. If it isn't a MacGuffin, then it's only good for sentimental value. Sir, I found the king's cat. Ah, oh, wonderful. Bring him over, princess. Jasper. Oh, thank you, young princess. I want to reward them personally. Name it, child. Excuse me, why aren't you writing out Niccolo? I've noticed that the good Marquis Niccolo carries a certain sword. Oh, that's right. You don't prioritize like sane people. But thank goodness, they don't lose sight of their more important goal. I'd love for you to give us a tour of the harbor. <laughs> what? Especially where they sort and separate the fish. Back at the castle, Roger's- Oh, no. I don't want to look at this. I can't marry you! But darling, why? <laughs> because I have leprosy! No! You're going to wish you had leprosy when I get through with you! Thank you! You bird I... I would call you an angel if you weren't in the process of sinking your perfectly good ship! This wedding is so on. You better! Lucas uses William's sword to signal Rogers in Alpernian code. So it was a MacGuffin, but that's still a really long shot, especially considering how little sense this code makes. Check the treasury. Rogers checks on the treasury to find everything gone, and stealthy Antonio just left the keys right on the floor. The getaway vehicle is a submarine, and this time the movie doesn't have Rogers invented it as its excuse for existing. The kids make their move, but are captured by Bruno. You don't know what Count Antonio is up to. I assure you, 
I do. Then how can you do this? Because sometimes one makes a decision that can never be changed. Hmm. Yeah, that answers nothing. And don't expect that to change because this is his last appearance in the movie. Oops! <laughs> Peachy. Rogers informs everyone about Antonio. Uberta takes it reasonably well. Time is the best remedy for a broken heart. Time and... Revenge! Okay, this attitude just about makes up for all the vomit that preceded it, but not quite. Niccolo captures the king while number nine frees the children. They steal the submarine and dock onto Antonio's ship. This plan is less solid than the ocean that's surrounding them. Someone's bound to head below deck eventually. The lyrics are well-intentioned, but the imagery that goes along with them does not fit the tone they set at all. My is that you'll find your way home to me. Focused on Elise, Antonio doesn't notice Uberta's revenge vessel coming in next to his ship. And apparently there's no crew around to alert him either. So, you staged everything. You're just getting that? You're slow, Derek. What, what is, is what, what we've been, been saying for the last six years? Jinx! Here you go. Whoa, you actually came prepared for that. Sick him! Are you need? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All I want now is for the dogs to maul Derek. It's already so mismatched with the tone. They might as well go all the way. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, it's a really good thing that all that happened before you took a drink. Let's find Elise. Uh. Derek! <laughs> Back in Borromeo, it turns out the king is sharper than we thought. If even I couldn't believe that the great Count Antonio and Marquis Niccolo would betray their king, neither would my people. Of the three potentially untrustworthy characters in the trailer, the king is the only one who appeared trustworthy at a glance. And indeed, he was. But kudos to the filmmakers. I did not expect that he would be running his own undercover sting operation. Men as popular as yourself need to be caught red-handed. Give it up for the best spy in the entire movie. Alpernian code between the kids solves two issues in one stroke. Then please come to the castle tomorrow. Let's bury the hatchet. Will you marry me, Lord Rogers? I love to. Oh, yes, yes! I'm not quite sure if Rogers heard that, but as long as we're considering them married from now on, I'll have something in this franchise to be happy about. The movie ends with a party in honor of quote unquote, Prince Lucas. You're a hero, Lucas. No, just a tool drummer. Maybe on the outside, but on the inside, every inch a prince. Yes, Prince Lucas. Hoist anchor, this ship is about ready to cast off. We're gonna run out of shipping puns at this rate. I wouldn't worry. The Naval Dictionary is a bountiful resource. I was born to be me. Basic. But I have such low expectations for this franchise anymore that it seems like a very fitting note to kind of- Ashley, it's not over yet. Oh, goody. What if they got- Hello? No. Meat. Is this really happening? This? Of all the freaking! <sighs> okay. Okay. It's cool. I'm fine. 
We're fine. It's all fine. <sighs> At least they didn't go all out. That would have been like really, really bad. Still, very unexpected. It, it just, it caught me completely off guard. I mean, just... Wow. So, that was Swan Princess Royally Undercover. With the past reviews, it's always felt like each subsequent movie keeps getting worse. With this movie, we might finally be starting to level out. Unlike the previous film, there's one central story with a few minor threads on the side. This claims to be a spy movie, and it does feel like espionage is a strong focus. One of its songs is decent, some of the characters' decisions are more reasonable than they've been in the past, it expanded the world a little bit, and one of its jokes got an honest laugh out of us. However, we've still got general character stupidity and animation that's either jerky or floaty. And still, the defining elements of this franchise have continued to be pushed aside in favor of stories about Elise. This franchise has such consistent recurring issues, you'd almost think that it'd get mundane to talk about. But only almost. There are frustrations that are completely unique to this movie. Bizarre character and story choices are the main problems. We have Lucas being skittish about going to the palace or acting like a prince, which is such a loosely implemented so-called character arc. We have Antonio flirting with Uberta, a point of conflict that technically works for the story, but clashes with her character's history, and is mostly just aggravating to watch. Throw in Alpernian code, the technology that shouldn't exist, William's sword, Bruno's lack of closure, things that are poorly thought out and written only to push the story along, without regard to whether or not those elements make sense. The main offending factor, and the reason we give this series such criticism, is that its creative head should be capable of putting out far better material. Instead, they keep giving us... How do I put this? Yes, that. That exactly. But let it be said that there are two things this production outfit is consistently good at. Coming up with all sorts of bizarre, frustrating story ideas that make us want to pull our hair out when we watch these movies, and keeping up a production cycle that we can't always keep up with when making these videos. Adult life is way too busy, and Steven and I would like to get the opportunity to spend some time together outside the context of Swan Princess. I read all of your comments anticipating the next Swan Princess review, guys. I hear you. They will happen in due time. But today is number seven's day, and it's time to talk about its plot holes. Why did Antonio buy all that Epilenia if he knew it'd be swept away? To prevent suspicion, he may have wanted to keep up the appearance of business as usual, but that's a very expensive cover-up, even in the interest of the massive heist he tried to pull later on. How did the adults know Elise and Lucas were in danger? No one messes with my granddaughter! After escaping Niccolo, the kids signaled that they were alright. But you're sure the children are safe? Perfectly safe, they said. By that logic, the adults shouldn't have known if the kids were in immediate danger from Antonio. Okay, that's the end of that until What did we literally just say? You'll get that review, just not now. Patience is a virtue. Exercise it. I think you can wait a little longer than not at all. Boo! No waiting! Get to work already! Yeah, so my Apollonia!